Hi guys, today I'm being led to start our video at this place called Luxor and uh, this particular Luxor is in Egypt and it is famous for being the home of the Valley of the Kings whose uh, most famous inhabitant would be Tutankhamun and this is the Luxor Temple, the ancient Luxor Temple with its phallic symbol of Baal right down in front or the shaft of Osiris but I'd more like to talk about these guys right here and what's particularly on their foreheads. And we can go to another Luxor, and this one is in Las Vegas in the United States. But this is the Luxor Hotel to find out what's on these guys' heads here. And we can find it out from this depiction here of the replica of the Sphinx. And if we look at the head of that, you can see that this is a serpent's head. And if we look through here, it sort of visualize that serpent's body going right into the brain of the Sphinx, the serpent mind, and this is what we've got here at the Luxor Temple. Here also at Luxor in Las Vegas, we have a phallus, the phallic symbol of Osiris. You can call it the erect penis on Satan, if you like. And we're going to revisit this particular incident that happened just over two years ago from the time of this video being made which was on October the 1st 2017 we're going to pull out some information nobody's ever seen before this is the Luxor Hotel right here this is the Las Vegas Airport and this is where that terrible incident happened that took the lives of 59 people including the perpetrator and the perpetrator did it from this hotel right here, which is called Mandalay Bay Hotel. Now you can see these two holes in the windows of the Mandalay Bay Hotel, because this is the room that supposedly or allegedly the firing was done from onto the crowd that was in this area right here, from here down to here. And I noticed when being led that if we drew a line directly from here down through to Mandalay Bay, from the peak of the Pyramid Luxor Hotel, straight through, it would actually pass through this window, go through the room, and out this window. And the Lord led me to look at the direction of, we've drawn a line from the Luxor Hotel, straight through one window, and out the other. We would be drawing the line through those two windows and the direction on the true compass card is 162 degrees right here and the Lord was leading me to look at what that meant 162 and it means to lead captive to capture there's a few people like myself believe that we have been led captive here to this place and I think this is going to be some confirmations that we're on the right trail here with our thinking and I'd more like to look at this one here like 163 G162 is to lead captive and it's like 163 so here is 163 to make captive to lead away captive bring into captivity where can we find that well in Luke 21 and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So we're being led to something here. And let's keep going to find out what. If we do the reciprocal of 162 degrees, which is simply going from the room back to the hotel in a direction, and we will go from the middle of that room between these two the equidistant point between these two windows as the line passes through them right in the middle of the room and we find not only is the distance 342 yards but the direction the true direction is 342 degrees so if you're like me you would think well the Lord's telling me something here I better look up 342 because if 162 means to be led away captive what does 342 mean we've got strong's hebrew 342 over here it means enmity hatred hostility well that's certainly in line with this event that we've been talking about so far 
And one of the first places we can see in the Bible that we find this word, Strong's Hebrew 3.4.2, is Genesis 3.15, where it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Well, who's he talking about? He's talking about the serpent. The Bible is talking about the serpent here and what God is going to do. He's going to put enmity between the woman and her seed and the serpent and its seed. And in Revelation 13, 18, it says, Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number shall be six hundred three score and six, which is six six six. And we're going to see that number come up in this today, and we'll we'll track that down to see where it leads us today. And the first instance will be right here, because the Luxor Hotel is due west, or this ground is due east of the Luxor Hotel. And in the geographical middle of this is in perfect alignment through this place here, which is the obelisk in front, over the top of the Sphinx's head, and right back to the middle of the pyramid. But we're going to be looking at something else here. We're going to be looking at this area immediately in front of the stage. And we're going to be looking at the phallus of Osiris here, which is the obelisk, to this spot right in front of the stage. Now, what's the spot right in front of the stage normally called? It's called a mosh pit. And it, moshing usually happens in an area which is simply called the pit. So we can say from here to here to the pit, from the phallus of Osiris to the pit, how far is it? Have a look, guys. This is from the obelisk through to just in front of the stage is exactly 666 feet. Are you kidding me? Inside that large pyramid called the Luxor Hotel is another obelisk and it says for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. And this is in the book of Luke as we've seen before. Here it is, Luke 21, 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written. And this is the warning about the destruction of Jerusalem here in Luke 21, which immediately precedes the coming of the Son of Man. So I think we better take this seriously. If I've been led to this, and many of you who look at my channel also follow Jonathan Kleck's channel and he recently jumped out of an aeroplane when the Lord led him to put this on his canopy. Can you see what I can see in the leading here? So let's go back to our pyramid and look at it again because so far we've come off this face which leads down to Mandalay Bay Hotel and we've come off this face to get to an area where a terrible massacre happened. What's on the western side? Well, a few years ago, under an amazing spiritual leading, I was led to this place in Parkfield. And if we draw a line from the Luxor Hotel due west, and here it is, 270 degrees, that is 270 degrees is due west. If we come due west, we come to this place, Parkfield, that I was led to several years ago and put out a video about it. And I suggest that you go and watch this and watch amazing spiritual leading to get there. This is by a fellow that lives on the other side of the earth as gets led to a little place called Parkfield about four times now. So let's have a look at what Parkfield is about. Now we've got a simulation done by the USGS and I've drawn a line here between San Luis Obispo and Fresno on this simulation. And here it is again here, and you can see Parkfield here. And on this USGS simulation, they show an earthquake beginning right here, where I was led to a number of years ago and put out a video about it. So I think we should pay attention. You 
you can see it starts in exactly the same spot. And there has been a number of researchers have recently noted that unmarked aeroplanes have been flying up and down the fault line in and around this area, surveying magma movement beneath the surface. So now let's have a look. We've been to the east of the pyramid at Luxor to the concert ground where that terrible event happened. We've been to the south, which was the Mandalay Bay Hotel. We've been to the west, exactly to the west, to find Parkfield, which I've been led to now three to four times over the years. But what's to the north? It's the only place we haven't visited yet. So let's take a look. To the north, we can see here zero degrees, which is true north. And I've got a line going out here, true north. And we're going to go, because we've seen this number so many times, and we know that the serpent seed is somehow connected to this 666 number, which is the number of carbon, this carbon-based world that we live in. And we're going to find out where that leads to after 666 miles exactly. And if you've been following my channel for any time, you'll have noted that I've shown this serpent that I've seen over the United States, Canada and Alaska and out along the Aleutian Archipelago for quite some time, maybe four or five years now. And I keep on getting led back to this spot. And in, indeed, just recently, I showed that this spot right in the serpent's mouth is Twin Falls because we live in a fallen twin system and the Twin Falls right into the mouth. And you've got to be kidding me. Today, due north, 666 miles exactly, leads me to right between the serpent's eyes on its forehead. Are you kidding me? And it leads to this little clearing right here between the eyes of the serpent. What happens if we move the mask back over the serpent's face? What's behind the mask right in the middle of the forehead? Might I suggest that this is what we're being led to by the Lord here. And the 666 carbon-based beast system. And I noted when I saw that, isn't it amazing how many deities have a marked forehead and a serpent involved? This is Shiva. This is Buddha, right on the forehead, protected by serpents. This depiction has a small mark on the forehead and it depicts Buddha as the serpent. This is Buddha in a garden with a serpent. Does that remind you of anything? And here are devout Muslim men with marks on their forehead. And this comes from the prayer mat on which they bow and I'm wondering could it possibly be if this is all real and you can see those numbers are real and the leading is real and we can see from the book of Luke that this is coming soon that Jerusalem will be surrounded by its enemies and the coming of the Son of Man shall come shortly after if you haven't repented if you haven't turned yourself around from down to up, I think it might be a really good idea for you to receive Jesus Christ today. Please find him. Seek him. Bring him into your life. May God bless you and keep you.